Hello, my name is Ben Decker. In this video, I'm going to show two of the most important equations in HVAC design and show an example on how to apply them. Both equations relate sensible load, flow, and temperature differential. One is for the air side and the other is for the water side. Let's take a look at the air side equation first. BTUH equals 1.08 times CFM times delta T. BTUH is equivalent to BTU per hour. I'm not sure why, but you will see both notation used in the industry. So this equation is for sensible heating or cooling. Sensible means that the heat added or removed changes the temperature. Latent load is the energy associated with adding or removing moisture without a change in temperature. Heating up air is always sensible. Cooling usually has sensible and latent load components. If you use this equation with cooling, be aware that this is for the sensible load only. If there is a moisture removal, then using a different equation with enthalpy is a better option. So let's look at this equation. The BTUs per hour is a sensible load. CFM is cubic feet per minute, which is the airflow. DT or delta T is the change in temperature of the air. I explain where the 1.08 factor comes from in a different video, so I won't discuss here. This equation is 100% accurate only at standard conditions, which is dry 68 degree air at atmospheric pressure at sea level. As will almost always be the case, your situation won't be at standard conditions. Changes in temperature, humidity, and elevation, which correlates to different atmospheric pressure, alter the 1.08 factor. However, with typical HVAC applications, this equation is close enough. Where you have to be extra careful is for cold or hot and humid outside air return air mixtures at air handler coils. The cold or hot and humid air changes the air density which affects this equation. We will go through an example that uses this air side equation on the next slide. But first let's look at the water side equation. BTUH equals 500 times GPM times delta T. This is similar to the air side equation except the factor is 500 instead of 1.08 and GPM which is gallons per minute instead of CFM. This equation is a great approximation for typical HVAC applications which utilizes pure water as the heat transfer fluid. Reason being is that the density of water does not change very drastically compared to air for typical HVAC applications. The major note for this equation is that the 500 factor is reduced when using glycol. In northern climates, glycol is used for freeze protection in some applications. So let's move on to an example and see how these equations can be used. For this example, let's assume we have a variable air volume or VAV system with central hot water, chilled water coils, and an air handling unit. The condensing boiler is used for the hot water coils, and at the zone level we have VAV boxes with reheat coils. The advantage of this system is that the central air handler can supply a constant supply temperature to all of the VAV boxes. Typical air handler supply temperature is 55 degrees to the VAV boxes. So let's assume that we have an exterior room with a dedicated VAV and that the interior winter design temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. A load calculation was done on this room and was determined that 8,000 BTUs per hour is required to maintain the room at 70 degrees. Typically, conditioned air is supplied from the ceilings. ASHRAE 62.1 standard has a requirement that the supply air temperature in heating mode can only be a maximum of 15 degrees above the design set point. If the supply temperature is greater than 15 degrees, then the designer needs to increase the ventilation air by 25%. So let's see if we can calculate the airflow and supply air temperature for this room. So as we determined in the previous slide, the heating load is 8,000 BTUs per hour with a design set point of 70 degrees. ASHRAE 62.1 allows a supply temperature of a maximum 15 degrees above the set point. So we will need to use 85 degrees as our heating supply air temperature to the space. Here's our air side equation. I've modified to solve for the CFM as we know the load and the delta T. The heating load is 8,000 and the delta T is 15. Solving for CFM, we get 500 CFM at 85 degrees to maintain the room at 70 degrees on the design day. Now let's take a look at how much water flow we will need at the VAV coil to heat the air up to 85 degrees. So how many GPM do we need at the VAV reheat coil? It is important to remember that the VAV coil is really responsible for two parts. The first part is sometimes known as the reheat load. 
This is the load to bring the air up to a neutral set point. For this example, it is heating the air from 55 degrees up to the room set point of 70 degrees. The second part is the heat load, which is determined by the load calculation. We already have the heat load, but we need to calculate the reheat load. Using 500 CFM, which is what we just calculated we needed for the room load, and a 15 degree delta T, which, which corresponds to heating the air from 55 to 70, the reheat load is calculated as 8,100 BTUs per hour. So the total load the VAB coil needs to handle is 16,100 BTUs per hour. Here's our water side equation I've modified to solve for GPM. For this example, we will assume the water temperature entering the coil is 140 degrees and water leaving the coil is 120 degrees. This is lower than a conventional heating hot water temperature, which is usually 170 or 180 degrees supply temperature. When using a condensing boiler, the flue condenses at return water temperatures lower than 140 degrees and the lower the temperature, the greater the efficiency. With using 140 degrees as the supply, we can ensure that the boiler will always condense, which takes full advantage of the energy savings due to the increased boiler efficiency. So using a 20 degree delta T and the 16,100 BTUs per hour, we calculate a water flow required of 1.6 GPM. As you can see with this example, these equations we went through are crucial with HVAC design to calculate air and water flow requirements for your particular project. Check out my other video where I derive these two equations if you are interested. I will be posting other videos regarding the different steps and aspects of HVAC design, so be sure to subscribe to my channel if you like this video and would like to see more. Thanks for watching.